Hey everybody, welcome back to my Pink Room of Doom. As always, I hope you're doing well today. And you'll probably start to notice a trend here. Um, I got a couple of new guitars, so we're going to talk about them. And we're going to start this video off with this. This is the Jackson JS30RR. <laughs> So before we get into it, let's go ahead and get the YouTube stuff out of the way. If you're not subscribed, hey, now is the perfect time to do so. There's a big red subscribe button down there. Go ahead and click it. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Click that bell notification to be notified when all of my future videos go live. And hey, if you feel so obliged to support me in any other way besides subscribing and liking and all of that good stuff, make sure you check the links down in the description for my Teespring and Redbubble store. There you can go and pick up some merch. I got shirts. I got stickers. I can do all kinds of stuff. I've got some designs on there that I really like and you probably will too. So make sure you visit those links and support me in that way if you feel so obliged. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about this guitar. So I've been on a shred guitar kick lately, meaning I'm after these uh, 24 fret, really thin neck shred machines. I don't know why. Specifically, I've been looking more at Jackson. Now, Jackson is not a brand that I am unfamiliar with by any means. I've owned quite a number of Jacksons in my lifetime, and I'll probably own more because all of these guitars that I've gotten recently have just reiterated the fact that Jackson is an amazing guitar brand, and especially their low-end stuff. Their lower-end stuff is nothing to mess about with. It, they are awesome playing guitars. If you want something that you can mod up, uh, that you can kind of throw around on stage or throw around just in general, without breaking the bank, check out a cheap Jackson. They're really, really fun guitars. So this one here that I have is the RR, the JS30 RR. Um, the RR just meaning that it is the Randy Rhodes inspired. Everybody knows that that's the long horn, short horn here. I've always, always, always loved this shape. Uh, there's just something that's just inherently cool about them. Um, this one's pretty, I wanna say bare bones, but it is by no means a bad guitar. So let's go ahead and talk specs and then I'll get you guys a playing demo. So just before we get into it, if you notice nicks, dings, scratches, paint chips, cracks, any of that kind of stuff, this is a used guitar. I didn't mention that in the beginning there, but it's not shiny, it's not pristine, just the way that I like them. So with that out of the way, start the headstock. It's that nice, pointy, familiar headstock shape that you associate with Jackson, says it right across the front there. You got your really annoying string break angles that Jackson are known for, and it's missing the truss rod cover, but I have that over there. I was setting this up and just haven't put it back on yet. Flipping over to the back again, nothing special, but interestingly enough, just like my JS30 Dinky that I did the video on not too long ago, this one is also made in India. So uh, I now have two Indian made guitars. Speaking of having the truss rod cover off here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and mention this. If you get one of these, make sure that you have one of these tools so you can make the truss rod adjustments. These aren't like the truss rods that you can stick a uh, hex key or an Allen key in there and give it a turn like most do. You'll need to get one of these. This is a seven millimeter adjustment tool. It's got a screwdriver on the end. I found this on Amazon for about 12 bucks. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna go and check that out as well. Moving on down to the neck here, 24 jumbo frets, rosewood fingerboard. This is a really, really nice piece of rosewood on this one. The frets are in pretty good shape on this one. This is a 2004, I believe, so this one's pretty old. Uh, dot inlays, I'm kind of, I kind of prefer the shark fins on these, but the dots on this one I've grown to really, really like, so not that big a deal on that. It is a maple neck. As you can see, it is a bolt-on maple neck. Nothing wrong with that. The profile is pretty familiar with uh, a lot of other Jacksons a lot of Ibanez's, a lot of ESP's or LTD's. Um, it all kind of feels pretty similar, so not super duper thin in the hand, but not super thick. Very, very comfortable. Working our way down to the body, this is an alder body, obviously in this beautiful RR shape. So it's uh, kind of like the offset V is what you might hear other people call it. One volume, one tone, three-way toggle here, so no blade switch or anything. Two Jackson pickups. Although they look like EMGs, they are not active, they are passive. They are Jackson CVR2 pickups. In my opinion, pretty similar to the uh, Ibanez uh, V7 and V8 that I did in my uh, RG2EX1 video that not too long ago. They're pretty similar. They're not super duper high output, um, but they get the job done. I'm probably gonna change these at some point, but they work for now. You got a standard uh, tunematic 
bridge here, nothing super duper special there. Flipping over to the back, you can see it is a string through body. I'm missing two of the little bevels here. That's just how it was. Again, this is a used guitar. Big old cavity here for all of your electronics. And somebody decided that they were gonna move this uh, strap button here around a couple of times. You can see some holes in the back there. And worth noting, the output jack is on the lower horn here, or the smaller horn, as opposed to being on the larger horn. So there you go. This is the Jackson JS30RR. Those are the specs. This is what it looks like. What does it sound like? As always, I'll give you a full mix with bass and drums, and then I'll give you some individual playing clips.